You mentioned that you felt the lump, but then you waited two weeks. Yep. Why did you wait two weeks? You know, it wasn't a conscious. It wasn't like, oh, hum, 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 let me wait. Mm -hmm. I was scared of dying. I was scared of dying. I was scared. I associated breast cancer with that because the only person I knew that had breast cancer was my aunt and she died young. Mm -hmm. I think your body does it as a defense to protect you. But it's interesting in medicine, when we have a patient coming in with a huge breast mass, it's going through the skin. People are like, oh, how could she? But I think your body does it as a way of defending itself. And it's just, you're scared. You know, you're scared. And my message to people is don't wait, don't wait. But my message to people in healthcare is have some compassion for that patient that waited Mm -hmm. because they may have trauma associated with whatever it is they waited for. And that's why they waited. I think the mind has the ability to be in some denial. I, I was scared. And I couldn't figure out the mechanics of it. I was traveling for work. And even when I tried to make an appointment for mammogram, they said I had to have a referring doctor. And that was hard. So you understand why people that aren't as educated as me have a hard time getting through the system. Because you had a hard time getting through it a little bit. And I was lucky. I was able to call my friend and say, can I come up? And she saw me the next day. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. I mean, even then when I didn't get treated in Massachusetts because I didn't have the right insurance, I think I had to wait two weeks to see um, a cancer doctor. Luckily, she had given me a plan, but I still had to wait. So, yeah, you see why patients have a hard time navigating the health system. And going back to that experience when you had your mammogram and you were informed that way. Oh, yeah. Right. Were you ever able to address that or? No. And I always say one day I should write a letter to them. But I address it by the way when I have a staff, making sure they treat patients with dignity. My staff knows if a patient calls me, they better get that message to me. And I think I just have a much better realization of what anyone says to a patient can have such huge weight. And you just don't know. You don't know what anyone's been through. No matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, you don't know what experience you're going through. I never saw myself as a patient before I became a patient, before I became a cancer patient. Because when you're fighting for your life, you really see yourself as a patient. Mm -hmm. So when I go see a patient, I always introduce myself. Hello, I'm Dr. Trasciola. Yeah, and I actually I'll say, yes, I'm a woman, and yes, I'm going to do your heart surgery. <laughs> I will never walk into a patient's room and, and not tell them who I am. Because mm-hmm. I think it's important. Patients need to know who's taking care of them. I think it's hard for us to feel like a patient or to understand what patients are going through. Being sick, you're never more vulnerable. It didn't matter that I was a doctor. Being a doctor did not protect me from having stage four cancer, did not protect me from getting cancer. So yeah, it has taught me a lot. And it said, it has made me, I think, less judgmental about patients. Not that I was real judgmental, but I'm really not judgmental. Mm-hmm. If someone comes in and they neglected something and everyone's like, oh, I can't believe they didn't do anything. Yeah, I can. I can. Mm-hmm. Let's not talk about it. Patients will say to me, oh, I wish I had gotten this x-ray earlier. I said, okay, you didn't. We're here now. Now what are we going to do about where we are? Mm-hmm. You can't look back. You got to just look forward. You know, I'll never say to a patient, well, if you hadn't smoked, you wouldn't have gotten lung cancer. Oh, man. If you weren't obese, you wouldn't have got a heart disease. No, you have heart disease. Let's talk about what you can do after we fix the heart disease. But right now, I'm not going to blame anything on your past. The past is the past. You can't change that. For us, by us, and just for us, this is hope for men, men.